For the past seven years, a bilingual committee in one of our local children's centers has been meeting to talk through the realities of developing a high-quality ECE bilingual program. They pull together a group of teachers, parents, community members, program directors, and faculty from the community college. Whoa, meeting for seven years? Aren't there examples of successful programs here in California? The committee understood that addressing issues like teaching strategies and crafting goals that had to happen in the context of a statewide discussion. Some of the committee members are passionate about addressing the social political issues. Even language is political. Here, watch this clip I have of one of the teachers. Um, part of my goal as a teacher who's learning is um, to kind of help shift that English is the language of power dynamic that exists with children. And I think that because um, in, in schools and in the world and in the media and in books, English is the language that's used. And so when your home language is something other than English, it can feel like my home language is not powerful. I am not important. My culture is not important. And so when they see teachers using their home language with them, with each other, with their families, it shows that this language is important. It is valued. Who I am is valued and important. And so for me, that's that's one of the major um, <laughs> goals, is to instill that in children. There's a lot to consider. How is the program doing? The program serves children six months to age five. Let's listen to one of the preschool mentors. So, so one of our goals <laughs> at the center is to really value and honor children's home languages. And so as much as possible, because we do have such a strong Spanish-speaking population, is to include Spanish as part of the program. So ways that this shows up is in the labeling that we do around the classroom, making sure that we have books, making sure that we have music, making sure that we have teachers that speak Spanish and that are bicultural, bilingual. And so all of those pieces are very important. The other thing that we just started doing a couple years ago was a rotation system for our circle times. And so we have an older circle group and a younger circle group. The older circle group are pre-K children that won't be here next year, and the younger are children that have one more year with us. And then the teachers rotate between who's presenting the circle time. So we're on a two-week rotation system. At the beginning of the semester, we set it up so that we know which teacher will always present in Spanish, so that every time they see Frisia, they know, oh, Frisia's gonna present in Spanish. And every time they see Mel, well, oh, Mel's a bilingual teacher. She'll use some Spanish and present in English and Spanish. And every time they see me, oh, I know I'm gonna, what I'm gonna be hearing is in English. And so it's on a two-week rotation. And, and there's many reasons for that. One is, like I say, it was sort of an experimentation to incorporate that and see how it goes. But one of the things that I've noticed is it gives each child where they're at sort of opportunity to feel competent, and it gives each child where they're at that push to the next place, too. And so it's working really well in that regard. The kids are getting a really good start on becoming bilingual. I bet families love it. Yes, the families are part of the planning processes each year and the staff continues to learn how to approach issues as they arise. Let's listen to Frisia thinking about the children's needs as they work toward finding comfort with unfamiliar languages. So I added a new persona doll who speaks English, and um, the premise for their story is that um, they both want to share a song. And so Lucy, this is Lucy. Lucy starts her song in English, and then Lupe says, no, no, no me gusta. No quiero escuchar esa canción. And then we decide to let Lupe share his song, and he shares the same song in Spanish. And then Lucy says, no, I don't like that song. I don't want to hear it. And so then they sit back to back, and I talk to them about how they feel, and they both say that they're feeling scared because they don't understand the language. And then, you know, I ask them, well, what can we do? How can we help them? And um, 
and then we try to find things that they have in common, things that they both like to do even though they don't understand each other's language. And it comes out that they both like to dance and we've been doing dancing songs at circle time. So then they learn, they each learn a word in each other's language. Lucy learns how to say dance in English, or Lucy learns how to say bailar in Spanish and Lupe learns how to say dance in English. And then we segue to the dance song. Developing a bilingual program takes courage and planning. But the planning is really important. It's like the program actually gains a new identity, a new culture. I see how bringing together a bilingual committee is a smart idea for ongoing guidance too. I want to explore what it would mean for my program to be officially bilingual. What is your experience with dual or multi-language settings? What does it mean to be an official bilingual ECE program? What can you offer the bilingual program conversation? 